So first off for tuning, I got a P28 with the Honda S300 in it. Then Here's the block. It's a B18B. Came out of my 1994 Integra LS trim. Uh, right now, what's in there is a JDM GSR swap. Made it to the LS transmission. Um, as far as this block and work that needs to be done to it, aside from the cylinders, since they're a little egg shaped, only by a couple thousands, but they still are egg shaped, so I'm going to go uh, 10 thousandths overbore, 0.25 millimeters. I'm um, still going to use standard 9.6 compression pistons. Um, I checked the deck myself. The warpage is within limits, there's actually no warpage at all. Um, on the other side, All these main caps I check myself with my bore gauge and my micrometers um, along with with the measurement of the crank journal they're all good for Honda yellow bearings and the number three is going to use a, a black I think I'll have to look at my notes and see um, so that's good the deck's good the only thing you need to go to the machine shop for a hone or 10,000 silver bore, whatever you want to say, and uh, just clean it up a little, throw it in the hot tank, because um, it is fucking disgusting. Here's the crank. It is the 89 millimeter stroke um, stop crank out of the uh, B18B Integra LS, whatever you want to call it. Um, I measured all these journals myself with my micrometer like I said um, they're all good they're all within limits none of them are scratched up they all look in really great shape um, I'm kinda surprised and I'm kinda not surprised this motor did have 170,000 miles on it but then again it is a Honda and of course it was maintained regularly, regularly. So all I really need to do to this thing is clean it up a little bit um, and once I order my bearings it will be good to go in. I'll put those in when I take the GSR swap out. Uh, well next we got Skunk 2 Alpha Rods. Obviously there's four of them. These rods come with uh, 3 8 ARP rod bolts. Um, they're advertised for being rated at 900 plus horsepower, which is far beyond what I need them for. So I'm pretty sure they'll do just fine. Here's the head I'm going to be using. Uh, it is a GSR head, JDM. Uh, I got it from H Motors for 500 bucks. Um, he said it came off of a motor that had bad rings on it. Uh, I checked all the valves myself. Only a couple of them are couple of them are leaking, which is fine because I was gonna lap them anyways. Um, other than that, just like the block, I checked the warpage on the surface myself. Uh, it's fine. It's within limits. So it doesn't need to be resurfaced, just cleaned up a little bit. <clears throat> I'll probably bring it to the machine shop with the block just to have them throw it in the hot tank as well. Um, I might put type R valve springs in here because this head came with type R camshafts. Um, 
I thought it was a mistake. I called them up to make sure that they hadn't sent me someone else's order. They said, no, it happens sometimes. Sometimes people get engines with uh, spoon internals and all sorts of crazy shit. He said it was my come up. So, um, you know, that's fine. I'll take these Type R cams over GSR cams any day. So the reason I would want to use Type R valve springs is just because of the more aggressive lift profile. Um, maybe the regular GSR springs might not be able to handle it. I don't know. Uh, I just want to play it on the safe side because I don't feel like dealing with valve float or, you know, swallowing a valve or anything like that. And the reason I know these are Type R cams Apparently the way you identify cams is these grooves here on the ends, um, on the distributor end of it. There's, you know, um, there's two grooves here and then one groove here. Some cams don't have a groove there or they only have one here and those would be like either GSR or B16 or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but apparently that's how you identify them and according to all the forums which I know might not be a trustworthy um, source but you know there's multiple sources saying that the amount of grooves and where they are on these cams identify them as type R cams and of course this head will be installed with ARP head studs here's the car itself like I said, it's a 94 LS trim. Uh, and it's got a JDM GSR swap, completely stock, aside from this short ram and uh, a gutted cat which doesn't do much if you still have the stock exhaust system on there so if anyone's planning on gutting their cat and keeping the stock exhaust system don't even bother because it doesn't do anything so the snail manifold I'm going to take it off of this one when I put the LS VTEC in and I'm going to use that to start with since I'm only going for 300 wheel horsepower I don't think it should hold me back if it does then I'll just upgrade to a Skunk 2 Pro or something like that I'm also going to be using the distributor off of this the fuel rail and the fuel injectors We also got the S80 transmission, which is the stock LS transmission. It's got the long gear ratio, so it's perfect for boost. So obviously, there's a lot more parts for this build that I haven't shown, um, basically because I don't have them yet. Um, like the pistons, I still need to order them. I'm kind of debating, you know, I said I would get 9.6 to 1 compression ratio because that's the standard that comes in the LS and it's perfect for boost. But nowadays tuning has become so advanced that you could even go with like a 10 to 1 GSR compression and still boost it. So I'm still debating that. Although I'm leaning more towards the 9.6 to 1 so that way I can have you know a little bit more boost Like I said, I'm only going for 300 wheel horsepower though And the only reason I'm going LS feed tech is because I had the motor laying around I Wouldn't mind the little bit of extra torque from the 89 millimeter crank um, And it's you know, it's the purpose of this build is to be a daily driver that's reliable and at the same time 
can put some power down when I want it to. Um, you know, so I'm looking for responsiveness, low end torque. Um, so I think I'm going to go with, uh, actually I know I'm going with CP Pistons. They do make a set that with the LS block and the GSR head is going to equal out to 9.6 to 1. So, you know, they're perfect. Um, obviously I still need the LSV Tech conversion kit. Uh, I need a GSR water pump. Uh, GSR timing belt. What I'll say in my notes here. Um, and the turbo kit. I may go eBay. Probably not. I've been considering it. But I don't know. It's a little sketchy for me. So I'm probably just going to go right, right from the start. I'm gonna go legit right from the start. Probably get something from Go Auto Works. Uh, they sell a kit that's perfect in the 200 to 400 horsepower range, and it's you know it's two thousand dollars, but it's you know I guess that's cheap for a legit turbo kit. So as soon as I get the pistons, the assembly's gonna start right away. Um, I can't really upload that much. I got a full-time job and a newborn son. So, but my deadline goal for this build is June, no later than June. So within the next couple of months, it should be done. It should be up and running. Um, go get it tuned. I'm gonna be filming every step of the way, all the assembly. So stay tuned for that.